Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and our topic for today is acid, bases and salts and today we are going to be looking at the last bit now of qualitative analysis. Previously we looked at tests with ammonia and tests with sodium hydroxide. So today we are going to look at other tests that can come. We will look at tests on anions. We are also going to look at also the insoluble um, solutions, how can you be able to identify some of those salts? So first of all, uh, you're going to look at the, the effects of heat of metal hydroxide. This is very common with qualitative analysis. So we are going to look at some of these other small details in qualitative analysis that come hard in hard with the tests with ammonia and sodium hydroxide. So if you heat zinc, calcium, lead, and copper hydroxides strongly, you notice you're going to form some a colorless liquid on the cooler parts. So it is common to see that when you are doing analysis and sometimes you can be asked to give the inference. If you are told to give the inference with hydroxides, so you can see the metal oxide is going to decompose to form water. Sodium uh, and potassium hydroxide, they only decompose at very high temperatures. The hydroxides of metal in the lower in the reactivity series are readily decomposed by heat than those of metal in higher series. So you can see when you heat copper hydroxide, you form a, a black copper oxide, lead hydroxide, you form lead oxide, which is red when hot and yellow when cold. Then zinc hydroxide to form zinc oxide, which is yellow when hot and white when cold. And then calcium hydroxide, which forms calcium, uh, copper oxide, this is copper, which is, uh, let's make that correction, calcium oxide, which is white. So for ion 2 and ion 3 hydroxide, they usually give ion 3 oxide in both cases. So it is important to remember this, especially in the theoretical analysis. So effect of sodium carbonate on various salt solutions. So sodium carbonate is another solution that it helps in precipitation. The reason why you notice most of the precipitating agents are either of potassium or sodium is because all the salts of these specific cations are soluble. So they're able to, to precipitate others out, the ones that are not soluble. So if you added a a few drops of sodium hydroxide to a solution containing magnesium ion. So if you take all the ions that you are discussing and you add a carbonate, this is carbonate, you notice that magne magnesium is going to form a white precipitate. And this is a precipitate of magnesium carbonate, calcium carbonate, white precipitate, zinc carbonate, white precipitate, Copper carbonate, a green precipitate, lead carbonate, a white precipitate, uh, iron, iron 2 carbonate, which is a green precipitate, and iron 3 carbonate, which is a brown precipitate. And also, it also gives off a colorless uh, gas, that is carbon dioxide, and then you also have aluminum carbonate, which is a white precipitate. So sodium carbonate, potassium, and ammonium carbonate are soluble. All other carbonates are insoluble. So their solutions can be used, just like I've said. So when calcium ions react with copper, they form calcium carbonate, and so on and so forth. So the ion 3 and aluminium salts hydrolyze in water, giving acidic solution, which reacts with the carbonate to, to liberate carbon dioxide. So you can see that's the reason why both ion 3 carbonates or iron three salts and aluminium salts. In the case where it was forming a precipitate, it also gives off carbon dioxide because of their hydrolysis. Remember that part is an exception, the iron three and aluminium. It's an exception, it's a bit different from the others. So the next one is the reaction of the metal ions with solutions of sodium chloride, sulfate and sulfite and sulfate. One is supposed to be sulfite. So this, the intention of this is to show solubility of some of the salts, the chlorides and sulfites and sulfates. It tells you, it helps you to identify which one is um, 
soluble and which one is not soluble. So we replaced the metal solutions in our test tube and then we added the chloride. And then we followed, we repeated the experiment with sodium sulfate and sodium sulfide. So zinc ions with sodium sulfate to form a colorless solution because of the formation of zinc sulfate, which is soluble, magnesium sulfate, which is soluble, copper sulfate, which is soluble, and then iron 2 sulfate, which is soluble, iron 3 sulfate, um, which is soluble, and then lead sulfate, which is insoluble, and barium sulfate, which is insoluble. So for sodium chloride, it is, it is going to form zinc chloride, which is soluble, and magnesium chloride, which is soluble, copper 2 chloride, which is soluble, iron 2 chloride, which is soluble, and iron 3 chloride, which is soluble. But with lead and barium, remember we see these are exceptions, so it forms lead chloride, which is a white precipitate, but will dissolve on warming, which is unique, and then barium chloride which is a white precipitate and then with the sulfide is just the same so zinc sulfide which is a colorless solution uh, magnesium sulfide also colorless solution copper sulfate sulfide not sulfate sulfide solution we do not have sulfides of iron 2 and iron 3 and then for lead because they are unique it will form lead sulfide and uh, barium sulfide which are solid white precipitates so all the listed cations should uh, are soluble except for barium and lead so lead uh, sulfate and barium sulfate are insoluble in water. Also lead chloride and barium chloride are insoluble in water with the exception of lead chloride which dissolves on warming. So here are the equation. So to distinguish the precipitate of barium sulfate and barium sulfate, we usually add an acid. So if you add an acid, the, sulf the sulfite ions or barium sulfite will dissolve while barium sulfate will not. Remember we mentioned this before when we were testing for sulfate and sulfite. So another way of identifying also ions we said is color. So it is good to be able to identify the ones that are colored ions, the ones that are not colored. So the ones that are colored like they're not colored sorry is sodium potassium calcium magnesium zinc lead and ammonium ions yellow we have zinc oxide and lead oxide zinc oxide is yellow and hot and then lead, ox uh, lead oxide is yellow and cold and then uh, we also have yellow solutions which are soluble and insoluble so we have yellow potassium and sodium chromate which are soluble and then copper compounds you notice both of most of them are blue but we have some green ones and then we have iron 2 which is green in color as i said the other green solutions like nickel chromium um and sometimes we have copper ions as well brown we have iron 3 and then we also have lead 4 oxide which is insoluble and this is when it's hot we have some pink solutions that is manganese solutions and copper metal sometimes it usually like looks brownish when it is insoluble then we have orange that is lead oxide and also mercury oxide usually orange and lead oxide is when it is hot we have some black solids in solutions like potassium permanganate ions are purple is purple in, in solution we have um, iodine which is brown uh, but it's when you heat it it forms a purple vapor and then we have insoluble ones are the manganese four oxide Copper 2 oxide is also brown, carbon powder is also black, black um, and then some other mm, metal powders. So sometimes even just looking at the color in the lab, you can be able to tell which compound you are working with. And then finally, just a recap on the anions. So the sulfate, 
is you test sulfate you can see we can use barium ions if we use barium nitrate uh, and then followed by nitric acid you should form a white precipitate that do not dissolve so only barium sulfate and carbonate can be formed as white precipitate barium carbonate is soluble in dilute acids barium sulfate will remain and remember also sulfite ions are also here and then chloride we use silver nitrate or lead nitrate and then if we use silver nitrate and acidify with dilute nitric acid we will form a white precipitate first when we add the silver nitrate uh, but it's going to if you warm it it's going to show that whatever ions we are testing is lead ions so only silver chloride and carbonate can be formed as precipitate so the silver carbonate is soluble in dilute acids but chloride is not so that helps you to distinguish between um, the silver ions and lead ions as well because for the lead ions it, dis it dissolves when warming so when the acid is added and then there is no so it doesn't dissolve it means it's chloride ions that are being tested not that for the nitrate ions we add iron to sulfate and then we follow it by sulfuric acid and we pour it at the corners to form a brown ring which tells you there is nitrate present so concentrated sulfuric acid forms nitrogen 2 oxide uh, with the nitrate ions this forms the complex we call it ion 2 sulfate nitrogen 2 oxide this is the complex with the brown ring and then for the carbonate, we usually add nitric acid. You notice that in our tests. Uh, and then we bubble the gas in lime water. So you form a colorless gas, um, which forms a white precipitate with lime water. And then it also, uh, it also um, turns blue litmus paper uh, into red. But maybe in high concentration it also extinguishes a glowing spleen but the conclusive one is the turning of lime water to white precipice so carbonate and hydrogen carbonate will liberate carbon four oxide so you must remember when you are inferring it can either be carbonate or hydrogen carbonate but for hydrogen carbonate also when you hit them they form water which is a colorless liquid and the cooler part of the tube so that's Conclusively ends uh, qualitative analysis, not fully because we have qualitative analysis uh, for organic. This is inorganic. So you notice uh, as we finish the topic, we have mentioned most of the anions and testing of cations. So there is also another part of qualitative analysis that we're going to mention when we go to, when we finish up organic uh, uh, chemistry that is when you look at organic two later on in form four so th this brings us to the end i hope you have been able to see how the testing of cations and anions is not that complicated with the theoretical knowledge you can be able to apply this knowledge to the practical assessment uh, see you in the next session